Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Anna Sophia, if you're new here. And in today's video, I wanted to show you guys some of the thrift flips that I did this past week and also tell you guys who won the giveaway. So the first winner is Gianna Daniels. And the second winner is Donna Doyron. So congratulations to both of you. Thank you so much for entering and being a subscriber. I so appreciate it. And I hope you guys find something amazing that you wanna purchase on Amazon. But for now, let's get right into these thrift flips. For our first project, we are going to be turning this old trash can and making it into a beautiful ceramic-like planter. So the first thing I obviously did was I cleaned it very well, but then the second thing I did was I took some stone spray paint and I kind of just gave it a once over the entire thing with that stone spray paint just to give it a more ceramic like texture. And after that was dry, I really wanted to paint the whole thing this beautiful cream color. You guys always ask me where I got these hexagon planters, so I was trying to replicate that, not necessarily the legs, but just the ceramic like texture and the cream color. I ended up needing to do three coats of this cream paint because that black still really wanted to show through. And then I had debated where that copper band was, painting that a different color, but I'm really glad I kept it all really monochromatic. And I love the way this DIY turned out. Another thing I wanna point out is this DIY is so easy to achieve because there's not really any like heavy duty materials you need or any like super DIY skills. You can literally find a trash can anywhere, even the dollar store and do this exact same project. And after the acrylic paint had all dried, I just gave it a once over with some poly acrylic spray paint just to seal everything in. And this is how it turned out. For our second thrift flip, we are going to be taking this basket that I found at the Goodwill for $4.99 and making it into a beautiful beaded pendant light. Some of the other materials that I used for this project were wooden beads that I purchased off Amazon, as well as my hot glue gun and some needle and thread, and I got the light fixture part from Ikea. Now these pendant lights are super trendy right now. I can see if I can link some pictures here to show you, but they're also really expensive. So I'm gonna show you guys a very affordable way to make this project on your own. So before I did any of like the crazy beading or anything like that, I needed to make sure that this DIY was actually tangible and something I'd be able to actually do. So I wanted to make sure that the light fixture part was gonna work before I did anything else. And I just did so by tracing the top of the light fixture to the bottom of the basket. And after I traced that circle, I just cut around to make sure that it was gonna fit and I got rid of all of those little loose parts of the basket. And I just popped the light fixture in, making sure that it fit nice and snug. What I like about the Ikea light fixture here is that it has another part that attaches to it from the inner side. So I feel like that's what adds to the kind of structure of this pendant light. And now that that part is all secure, it's just time to start on the beadwork. I'm gonna give you guys a forewarning. This part does take quite a bit of time, but the end result was so beautiful. I think it's totally worth it. I bought this large pack of beads on Amazon for $16, and I'm only going to be using three of the sizes. So I ended up using the 20 millimeter, the 16 millimeter, and the 14 millimeter. So how I decided to string the beads along was just good old needle and thread because I needed something that was going to be able to be sewn into the basket. And you'll see what I mean a little bit later on, but pretty much the pattern that I landed on was I did six 14 millimeters, then six 16 millimeters, and then four 20 millimeters. And then I went back to 16 and then 14. So it kind of made a loop around. And you can see I have my trusty bowl here just to make sure all the beads don't slide out the other end. And to secure the beads on either side of the thread, I actually just put a little dab of hot glue so they stayed put exactly where I wanted them to stay. 
Obviously, you'll wanna leave excess on either side of your thread because that is how you're going to actually attach that individual string of beads to your basket. So you're gonna to wanna to leave enough that you can thread it around a couple times into your basket. But I did wanna mention, this is just the pattern that I chose because this was what worked for my basket. So when you go to your thrift store, the odds of you finding this exact same basket is probably very slim to none. So you'll have to see what you find and what's gonna look right. So I just did one string of beads at a time. So then that way I could kind of see how everything was gonna lay and everything was like approximated well. And to stick the needle in, I just picked the part where it kind of divots in so it would be easy to feed through. And I was able to sew around each side about three times. So I felt like it had a pretty secure hold, but obviously if you feel like you need more support, you can always add hot glue to the inside of the basket. And I just continued on that way. The rest of the process is very repetitive. And like I said, would have to be very customizable based on whatever basket you landed on. And as you're working on it, if you're trying to gauge how much you should let the beads hang, just kind of like lift the lampshade up so you can kind of see exactly where it's gonna fall to make sure everything is gonna be nice and symmetrical. And after I sewed the first string of beads on, after I did my second string of beads, I tied it directly adjacent to the first string. And I just repeated that process until the whole bottom layer of our pendant light was completely filled. After that first row was all done, I decided to go in between each of those like petals, we'll call them, and I decided to do another one that was laying over top of it. So it kind of had like a layered beading effect. The pattern that I followed for those was I started with four 14 millimeter, four 16 millimeter, and then 10 20 millimeter, and then back to 14 and 16. So it stays nice and symmetrical, and then that way you have something that looks really nice and put together. But I'm not gonna lie to you guys, this DIY does take quite a bit of time. It took me about two hours to do all of the beadwork and sew it in and everything. But honestly, for $25, it is a steal in comparison to things that you will see at some of the high-end stores. And this is how our beaded basket pendant light chandelier turned out. And for the last thrift flip, we are going to be taking this large canvas art that I found at the thrift store and making it a little bit more my aesthetic. There's nothing wrong with this print. It is a print. I'm not damaging anything super valuable or anything like that, but it's just, you know, I don't really have a lot of blue in my house, nor do I want to. I found this print for $19.99, but it was blue day, so I got it for 25% off, which makes it about 15 bucks, which for a 30 by 40 canvas print is actually a very affordable price like if this fit in your house already you lucky duck because honestly that's such a good deal but for me again I like more neutrals so I decided to paint it now I'm no Picasso and this isn't gonna be an original Phoebe buffet but I am going to show you what I did to make this really aesthetic and neutral so the very obvious first step whenever you wanna remake a print that you found at your thrift store is to just paint it whatever base color you'd like. I chose to use that same cream acrylic paint that I used in the first DIY just to give it a nice base. I didn't want it to be like stark white, but I did want it to be cream colored. And just to give you guys an idea, here is kind of the look I was going after. I wanted it to be very like neutral and monochromatic, but still have a lot of texture. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm taking a slightly lighter acrylic paint shade in more of a white white versus a cream. And to apply this white paint, I'm actually going to be using this sponge I found at the Dollar Tree. You can find it in like the bath section. And I'm just putting it directly in the white paint, but getting some of that excess off. And then now I'm gonna apply it directly to the canvas. So I'm just dabbing that around in random places with no rhyme or reason until I feel like it looks good. I do have a spray bottle here just in case I put too much on, I can kind of like spray it and then take some of the excess off with that spray bottle. 
and I did that over the entire canvas and I just wanted to now give it some dimension. So I'm actually going to be doing the exact same thing, but instead of doing white, I'm gonna be doing a slightly darker color. So I used this like mocha acrylic paint, but I mixed it with a lighter color and I still wasn't happy with that. So I added a little bit of gray to it as well. So after I got the color that I wanted, I'm taking again a damp brush and I'm just kind of splotching it all over the canvas. Again, if I use too much, I use my spray bottle just to kind of take off some of that excess. And this is why I love abstract art for people like me who aren't artists, but who just have a specific color that they want in mind to be portrayed in their house. You can totally do this DIY and it's so simple and anybody can do this. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. If you liked it, please make sure you give it a thumbs up and tell me down in the comments down below which one was your favorite and I will see you next Sunday. Have a great week, bye.